Hey guys, what's up? It's Lainey, and today I'm doing a tag video. This is the AuthorTube oldie tag, and it was created by Lindsay Puckett, who is one of my really close writing friends here on AuthorTube, and I thought this would be a little fun because I've been around for a while on YouTube. I pretty much have seen AuthorTube become what it is before it was even pretty much organized. Let's just jump in to the questions. Question number one is, how long have you had your AuthorTube channel? I started my YouTube channel in 2013. That was before AuthorTube was an organized community. I was a booktuber. I still pretty much am considered a booktuber as well. I straddle the hybrid line of booktube and authortube. I started talking about my writing in 2014 because that's when I completed my first novel. Um, and then I kind of started incorporating more and more writing videos and I started doing my monthly uh, writing vlogs in 2016. And that was still pretty much before authortube was a thing. I really feel like it was, it started to become a thing kind of in the summer of that year because that's when I moved into this apartment and that's where I first heard of AuthorTube. That's my history with AuthorTube, I guess. What aspect of writing have you improved since joining? I'm gonna say being able to complete a book because all four of my completed novels, yeah, all four of the completed novels have been novels that I wouldn't have been able, probably able to finish unless I was holding myself accountable online prior to talking about my writing on video. I had never completed a full novel before. What are your biggest writing accomplishments since starting your channel? One of them is getting critique partners because that is always the number one difficult thing um, in, in, any in any writing community is to find people to read your work and then have a good relationship enough with them that they want to continue to read your work and vice versa. Besides critique partners, another huge writing accomplishment was that I got into Author Mentor Match in 2018. Um, that was the first time where I felt really, really, really good about what I was producing and what I was writing because someone else liked it or loved it just as much as I did and they wanted to help me. Has your word drafting style, platter, pantser, planser, evolved since you began your channel? I would say yes and no. No, because I'm still pretty much a plotter to an extent. I still have a rough outline of what I'm trying to write towards, but also yes, because I have found what in that sphere has worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. I've used this term before to describe me. I find myself more as like a road mapper, which is kind of like discovery writing. You have a general idea of where you're going, but the exciting part of being on a road trip is finding those nooks and crannies that you wouldn't have found if you would have planned it out. That's like the closest I feel like what my writing style um, or drafting style is like. If you plan to publish, has your publishing path goals, traditional, indie, hybrid, changed since joining? No, my goal, my publishing goals have always been to be traditionally published and that has not changed. I have four books to my name and none of them I would consider self-publishing. And a lot of that is just because I wanna be a traditionally published author. Another part of it is because I don't have the bandwidth and the smarts to literally do all of what um, self-publishing entails. Also, I just don't have the money for it because if you were going to self-publish, you're going to be spending a lot more money on editors and cover design because those are the two most important things and the most expensive. So yeah, I'm still pursuing traditional publishing. That is how I see myself as an author and as a writer and hopefully <laughs> one day that will happen. What is something writing or channel related you've learned the hard way? Well, writing related has definitely been learning to revise. Not that I'm someone who's like draft one, the book's done, it's perfect, but I really don't like revising. I'm definitely more of a drafter. I get really frustrated with revising. I also get really overwhelmed really quickly with um, revising because there's so much that needs to fix that my brain doesn't like that. Channel wise, and this is pretty much with booktube I guess and authortube is that it, both communities are so niche on YouTube that it's hard to break out. I'm fine with where I'm at but of course when I was just starting out in 2014, 2013 I got my burst and since then I've kind of plateaued and that's kind of frustrating because like obviously I want to reach more people and yeah that's just like the one thing that's been hard is just kind of like 
live at peace with where I'm at and be fine with that, which I am, but it took a while for me to get there. In what ways has AuthorTube changed since you've started your channel? Well, there's a lot more people <laughs> than when the community was first starting, but I'm gonna have to say, and I know a lot of people have said this for this question, is live streams. There's always a live stream going on, a write-in with um, AuthorTube. That's something that has definitely changed. And I've even noticed that over like the past nine months, even when I haven't been creating content on YouTube, I've noticed that a lot. Like I'm like, man, there are so many streams in my feed right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's great. Um, I wish that I could do that. I feel always so awkward if I were to do that by myself. So I'd have to like find friends to do it with me. <laughs> what is something that frustrates you about AuthorTube? Oh man, one of them isn't really anybody's fault. It's just that it is such a niche community that it's hard to break out. It's hard to um, reach more people, um, but obviously some people have found really great success in it and that's great, um, but it's just a smaller community in general. It's hard to grow as fast as like booktubers, for example, and other like lifestyle or other communities as well. What is your hope for the future of AuthorTube? Well, it would be fun to see more traditionally published authors. They don't even have to be well established, just people who have agents or have book deals um, coming on YouTube to regularly film content. I mean, there's so many great self-publishing um, author tubers that are out there right now. And their advice is invaluable for people who are also self-publishing. But since like that's not what I need in advice, um, it's hard to find the people who have the traditionally published advice that actually are in traditional publishing and are just doing a generic video. And of course, I hope AuthorTube gets more visibility um, that just be great in general um, and seeing just more people from different sides of writing or different industries in writing whether that be more hybrid authors more self-publishing for more experience and of course more traditionally published authors just to get a, a little bit more of a well-rounded community as well as aspiring authors as well like like your girl. <laughs> Share some oldie wisdom for newly author tubers and I actually have a couple. So the first one is to join the author tube Facebook group. I'll, I'll link it down below. That's a great resource to find more people to talk to, see more people in the community, all that kind of stuff. So I think my biggest advice if you're just starting out is to just be yourself. When you're coming out here with all these 101 advice that has been kind of done before, like craft related video topics. I think a lot of people get frustrated when they do these kind of videos and they don't see a lot of growth. It's because these people, other watchers don't know who you are. And I think my biggest advice is to first show your audience who you are as a writer and who you are as a person before you get into more advice type videos. At least for me, I mean, I don't, I don't consider myself a writing advice channel just because like, I feel really uncomfortable giving people advice and I'm still just an aspiring author and that's just like my own thing. You might see something that I've done that you're like, oh, that's a really good idea. Let me try that out. And that's great. But my focus with my writing channel has always been to show you guys how I'm doing it and also show you guys my journey. Like that is the staple of my channel. I think when you're just starting out, it's harder to grow an audience when you're giving advice and people really don't know who you are. Just think about what kind of content you want to show. My last um, advice is also just a general YouTube advice, is that YouTube takes work. A lot of people expect instant success from creating a YouTube channel, and that is 100% not how it works. I mean, of course there are the unicorns of the YouTube community as a whole that find success overnight, but for AuthorTube, I'm gonna go on a limb here and say you're not gonna find an overnight success. Uh, with an author tube channel. It takes time and hard work to grow and build your author tube channel. If you know that going in, I think you're less likely to quit because <laughs> I have seen some author tubers come in expecting it almost to be easy and then it ends up not being easy and then they kind of lose their steam with their with their videos. That's my advice <laughs> and take it or leave it, I guess. But that is it for the oldie tag. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Shout out to Lindsay for creating the tag again and I will see you guys all in a future video. Bye.